It supports 422 10-bit video recording at 40K 60P with Sony's S Cinetone color signs. Ooh, that's nice. Hey, welcome back to DigiPro News. Welcome back, Andy, to DigiPro News. I know, I know, it's been a little while, but you know, got to take the summer off. But I'm back now and it's time to look at everything that's, you know, kind of gone over the summer, um, things that have just been released. You know, there's not, it's been, not like it's been a slow summer, but there hasn't been too much. So there's some ground to cover. I'll give you that. But hopefully there is loads in this episode that we can go through, not super fast, but I'll, I'll kind of give you the key benefits of stuff um, that I found. And we'll get, you know, we'll get back into the rim of this because I know that this helps you stay at the top of your game, gives you, you know, if you're new here, the aim of DigiPro News is to be able to round up the latest and greatest in new digital technology, uh, video production workflows, hardware, software, whatever that might be, and give you all in one place so that you don't have to go searching for it. And you can be ahead of your competitors because, you know, if you want to try out this new gear or you've, you know, you've heard of something that could help you in your workflow, then that's just a win for you. And it's a win for me because, you know, I get to see you guys. So let's jump into it because it has been a little beat and I've got a fair few things to go through. And the first one um, is actually something that was released a couple of days ago and it's from Jian or uh, Jian. Uh, how do you pronounce it? I'm not, I can never, never get this right. Z-H-I-Y-U-N. Jiayun, I think is how it's meant to be pronounced. I've seen different places say it different ways. But anyway, the maker of, you know, like um, gimbals and like phone gimbals and those sorts of like pieces of hardware. Well, they've got another gimbal um, and it's called the Crane 4. So the Crane had well, so the fourth iteration but the crane gimbals they're like competitors to like the dji ronins like the the rs uh c ronin uh rs2 this has got some unique new features which are going to be incredibly handy i've got to say the first one is that it has a balance indicator light so you know when you're setting up your gimbal and trying to make sure that it's all balanced correctly um and you know it can be an absolute pain because if you don't get it right the battery runs down quicker um but getting it right takes a long time sometimes depending on what setup you've got going. Well, this has an indicator light telling you if it is balanced or not. Therefore, potentially saving you battery life. It's got a Bluetooth feature, uh, integrated Bluetooth feature that allows direct control over shutter in some uh, some cameras, not all of them. You've got to find out which ones are compatible, uh, but that could be interesting. Um, it's ergonomically designed to reduce fatigue. So it has this like wrist guard on the bottom of it so that you can like rest your wrist whilst you're holding it which should help release some of the weight that you're carrying from kind of just your hand. Um, that's cool. And this Xiaoyan Crane 4 can actually hold bigger DSLR cameras now as well. So they're talking about uh, Black Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, um, the Zcam and the Sigma FP. These are all quite easily held by the Crane 4, it says. Um, it's got an expanded arm length and fortified motors, which provide precise control, all packed into a portable design. So it's got an intuitive, might say intuitive, color touch screen, um, integrated 1.22 inch color touch screen, um, which gives you quick control over some of the gimbal's uh, features um, and offers real time status checks, it says. You know, the battery that comes with it, it can run for 12 hours, they say, 12 hours, um, but it can also get power delivery from USB. So there's fast charging capabilities, um, which ensures a full charge in under two hours. So 12 hours runtime and then two hours to charge it back up again. That's that's pretty good. It also has this like little inbuilt fill light that comes with it, um, which is a first for the Crane series, pretty much first for a gimbal, I'm going to say. Um, it's got it's a 10 watt little fill light um, and it says it's capable of illuminating up to 3200 lux um, with a range of, you know, it's, it's by color basically, range from 2700 to 5500 Kelvin, which should amplify and just add a little bit of a boost to scenes that, you know, if you're on the run or whatever, it might just add a little bit more. I, I don't know. I don't know really how much use that's going to be. Be interested to see that, but comes with it. So, okay, sure. We'll give it a go. And Jion are saying that it's 
you know, can be used with even more peripherals, basically. Um, so it's compatible with various other accessories, uh, such as like remote monitors, uh, follow focus motors, um, Zion's transmount image transmission system, which I've not seen or used actually, um, but allowing creators to use it in more scenarios, basically. Um, so what does the Crane 4 retail for? Um, it's just the Crane 4 on its own is starting at 699. And then the Crane 4 combo, um, which includes the, a master move accessories and storage bag is 749. So yeah, a good priced gimbal with some really cool features. The best thing like is like the ergonomic design and like that balance light probably. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a gimbal. But it can, if you've got like a, yeah, Blackmagic pocket cinema camera, this might be the one for you. So I was just talking about DJI, um, and yes, they do have some good gimbals. Um, but not talking about gimbals, not talking about drones, we're talking about the Osmo Action cameras, because they actually have a fourth one as well. And this, it's not going to be a competitor to the, the, the uh, Insta360 um, Go one that just came out, because that looks awesome. I've still not got my hands on one of those, but I keep seeing videos uh, popping up around the internet and the things that you can do with that, the places you can go, and the fact that it's got that remote uh, kind of capability on the back once you take the little one out. Anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about um, the Osmo Action 4 from DJI. They have released a new Osmo Action and they say it is ideal tool for adventurers, offering exceptional image quality and unmatched camera flexibility, designed for capturing thrilling moments. Sure. So, what is so good about the Action 4? Let's take a look. It's a 1.3 inch image sensor uh, with a wide f.2 aperture, uh, ability to shoot in 4K 120 frames per second with a 155 degree ultra wide field of view. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty damn wide. Um, 4K 120 frames per second is good, like that. Advanced stabilization called Rocksteady. They all have their own, they all have their own stabilization modes now, don't they? Um, I can't remember what the free, the Insta 361 was. Um, I want to say sure stable. It's not that uh, something. Anyway, they've all got them. This is called Rocksteady 3.0, um, which has horizon balancing and uh, slash horizon steady, which the 360 go did, uh, does 10 bit D log M color. So, uh, DJI's D log can get 10 bit out of the uh, action four so advanced color grading uh, capabilities in post from uh, the footage on this which is nice with over 1 billion colors um, and obviously the wider dynamic range that comes with 10 bit um, d log um, being used more and more uh, obviously by people that uh, fly dji drones um, d log is nice to get out of it so having it in the action cameras being able to match them potentially that's nice um, color temperature sensor for authentic tones suited for various shooting conditions. Right. Okay, cool. So battery life, 2.5 hours of filming. That's pretty good from something that size. I'll take two and a half hours. Definitely. Uh, fast charging takes 18 minutes to get to 80%. So even if, you know, if you've been doing something for two and a half hours and you want to take a break stick it on charge for 18 minutes and you're back up to 80 percent you know get another like two hours out of it nice um and bat the battery can operate at temperatures as low as minus 20. um don't know what you might be doing at minus 20. i uh, guess pretty extreme snow sports maybe so the Osmo 4 has a magnetic quick release design. It has native vertical shooting um, for those that want to go straight to social in vertical. Um, dual touchscreens um, resistant to, so it's got dual touchscreens, so on the front and on the back um, with customizable modes if you want to do that. Um, it can also go to a depth of 18 meters without any sort of protective case. So that's quite good um, in terms of being able to use it underwater. But it's also got expanded recording options, including built-in microphones, stereo recording, advanced wind noise reduction, and Wi-Fi live streaming. So you can, yeah, you can live stream this in vertical, I'm guessing as well, uh, using the inbuilt 
facilities. Other notable features are voice control and prompts, two times a digital zoom. Not sure how much I'd rely on a digital zoom within an action camera, but willing to see what that looks like. Um, compatible with external mics, so you can add in, you know, a better mic than the internal one to get. If you, you know, if you are going to be using this for live streaming, having an external mic to live stream with would be like hundred percent the way to go with that. You would not want to rely on the internal mics on an, on an action camera, but it, live streaming with it and an external mic could be a nice little setup. And then they've got their own um, app for uh, it's called Light Cut, which is offers auto editing um, live feeds and in app editing tools. So it's kind of like AI sort of like editing basically. And then the price, what what's this new Osmo Four going for? It's going for three nine nine for the standard combo and 499 for the adventure combo. That is a very good price for an action camera that can do 4K, 120 frames per second, like stupidly wide field of view, um, can use external mics, uh, can live stream for it, with it if you want. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Oh yeah, no, obviously the 10 bit D-Log. Yeah, 399, not bad I'd say. Um, oh yeah, if, if you want to check out any of these uh, products, um, you know, that I've been talking about, obviously they're like, softwares and stuff it's not easy to do that but hardware i'll drop some links down in the description below and you can go and check them out yourself so what's next obviously there's something fairly large to talk about which you've probably seen your youtube feed cluttered with two new sony cameras um two new full frame like the the low end full frame sony cameras the A7C II and the A7CR. I'm not going to be able to do a review of these. It that does any justice to the ones that are already out there. I don't even have the cameras to be able to use. And the people that review those get uh, products before release uh, to be able to review with. So let me just give you some details about what these cameras are. And you can go and check out some of those other reviews. Or you can go and have a look on Sony's website. But the 7C. So... From what I've seen from other people talking about it, basically it's the guts of the A7 IV in the A7C uh, body. So it's a, it's a really good camera, basically. Uh, both of them are really good cameras. So the A7 II features then. So it's a full frame sensor um, with 33 megapixels um, or effective megapixels. It's really compact and lightweight it's only like 12 centimeters by 7 centimeters by 6 centimeters and weighs like 513 grams so nothing um yeah emphasis on travel and daily um like snapshots um compared to the a74 it's 22 percent lighter with 45 percent less volume so yeah same guts but much smaller so the iso in these things ranges from 100 to 51,200, 51,200. Um, and it's expandable. It says expandable ISO 50 to 204,800 for still images. I'm not sure exactly how you expand the ISO. I need to look into that. But that is incredible. 204,800 for still images. I need to check that's right. Wow. Okay. Anyway. So that's the A7C II. The A7C-R um, features full frame sensor with 61 effective megapixels um, and yeah, weighs 513 grams. This is targeted towards, uh, you know, portrait, wildlife, and landscape photographers um, combining high resolution with mobility. So comparing it to the A7R5, slightly different uh you know, Sony Alpha camera that it's comparing here to 29% lighter and 53% less volume with an ISO range of 100 to 32,000 and expandable, it's less on this one, expandable to ISO 50 to 102,400 for still images. So some shared features between the two. So but both of these cameras have these features. Um, both have AI processing units now, uh, the Bion Z XR processors. Real-time recognition, auto-focusing uh, for precise subject recognition. Five-axis in-body image stabilization, so they've improved the in-body stabilization for the, uh, the 7C. It supports 422 10-bit video recording at 40K 60P, 
um, with Sony's S Cinetone color signs. Ooh, that's nice. Um, improved video performance of high quality 4K video uh, with features such as S Log 3 and yes, S Cinetone for cinematic shots. Um, equipped with touch operable, very angle LCD monitors. Um, the creators app uh, for easier media uploads and remote camera operation. Yeah, that's that's the that's the two that's the two cameras. As I said, I can't do it justice. I'm not going to kind of give like an opinions on it, but they do seem like very decent stills cameras. Is what I'm going to say. Video wise, obviously the 422 10-bit uh, Cinetone, very nice to have at 4K 60. Um, I don't think this is going to be like videographer's camera of choice potentially um but still a very nice camera especially at this price point because the a7 II, the a7c2 uh, which is available in uh this month is 2100 pounds um and with a lens the 28 to 60 millimeter lens is 2350 the A7CR, which is available in October, the camera only is 3,200. So 2,100 for the A7C2. That's a very good price. And that, you know, that's that's basically like the same sort of price as the A6700 that they brought out, but it's full frame. Um, yeah, that is that is a very good price for that camera. So yeah, go and check it out and see what you think. I'd love to hear your reviews, in-person reviews from this camera as well. So talking of cameras and lenses, let's move on to something else. And um, Tamron. Tamron have released a new lens for the Nikon Z-based uh, cameras. And it's a 35 to 150 millimeter f2 to 2.8 di3 vxd not sure what those stand for at the end, but it has released it for Nikon Z. So obviously the Nikon Z, Nikon Z, however you like to say Z, Z, um, is a fairly new lens mount system. And Nikon have a range themselves, uh, the, you know, the Nikon uh, line, but Tamron look to be entering it with a rather interesting focal length there. So the 35 to 150, they're saying this lens stands out as the first for Nikon Z mount cameras to feature a maximum f2 wide open aperture. Um, it boasts high level performance under various conditions suitable for travel photographers is where it puts it. I think this is useful for quite a few different industries like 35 to 150 is a decent, you know, telephoto uh, range and at f2 to 2.8. That makes it even more impressive. Um, I've not used Nikon Z mount camera yet, um, but I don't see why that. But I'm I definitely want to, um, and would be very interested to use this lens with one of those cameras. So, oh, the, the VXD. It says it. So enhanced by the VXD, which is voice coil extreme torque drive. Oh, it's a, one of the motors. Got you right. This lens provides quick and precise autofocus. So the VXD is about the, the the motor inside. Okay, got you, right. And yes, the range eliminates the need to switch lenses frequently. So that's why, so the 35 to 105. You know, Tamron, they always do this, don't they? They've got the, whatever lens you go for, it's never the usual like millimeter uh, that you're used to. So, you know, you'd be normally used to like a 24 to 105. Nope, Tamron, not going to do that. Or maybe it's like a 16 or 18 to 30 or whatever. Tamron, no, we'll go 17. I don't know why they do that, but it puts them in kind of like a different category, I guess, of lenses. And so this is 35 to 150. Yeah, a good kind of like spread of range there. So it's got versatile zoom. Uh, the range is perfect for catching everything from landscapes to telephoto subjects um, and no need to switch lenses during shooting. It's got integrated 4LD low dispersion and 3GM glass molded are spherical elements and this lens delivers premium image quality across its range. This is what they say. It's comparable 
to having six different lenses in one, is what they're saying. Well, swift and silent autofocus. The VXD linear motor ensures fast, precise, and quiet autofocus suitable for both photos and videos. Um, close range. Oh, okay, right. At its widest, the lens focuses at a, as close as 0.33 meters, 13 inches, while still delivering a stunning bokeh. Bokeh. Bokeh effect. All right. Uh, weight. Let's have a look at this. Uh, 1,190 grams. So it's not, you know, it's a little bulky. Give you that. Um, 42 ounces for those uh, using ounces. Uh, Fill size standard 82 millimeter. Uh, and yeah, the mount Nikon Z. Haven't got anything about uh, what price it is yet. So I can't say on that. And I wouldn't want to hazard a guess either. Tamron do tend to be a little bit lower priced than obviously um, camera body uh, lens makers, such as like your Canon, your Sony, uh, your Nikkor, um, kind of Panasonic, but no guarantees. So be interested to see where this kind of compares um, and what sort of images and video you get out of it. Interesting lens. So with these new cameras and lenses, how you record your images and video is probably a good transitional point onto Samsung's new Pro Ultimate memory cards. Yet yeah, Samsung have brought out new micro SD cards um, that, yeah, they're, they're labeled Pro Ultimate UHS-1. Um, oh, full-size SD as well, actually. I just thought they were micro SD. Full-size as well. Aimed at professional photographers and content creators. So uh, the cards have a maximum capacity of high 512 gigabytes. So half, you're nearly getting half a terabyte from an SD card now. That is mind-blowing. I remember... No, not... Do you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to go there because everybody remembers. And yeah, it was small. It was tiny. So 512 gigabytes out of an SD card um, with a sequential read speed reaching 200 megabytes a second. The reason, they said the relevance of these cards, they say, is given the increase in production of high resolution content from devices such as drones, action cameras, DSLRs, and a demand for faster and more reliable storage solutions, they've developed the Pro Ultimate uh, SD cards. Performance wise, um, these are going to be the lead in the industry with reads of, because of these read speeds, but with also write speeds of 130 megabytes per second, um, which they say is ideal for transferring large files like 4K Ultra HD um, and full HD video. The cards also offer water protection. Up to 72 hours in up to two meters of depth, these cards can withstand, um, and a drop distance of five meters. Wear out protection, it says up to 10,000 swipes. So they can be used in extreme temperatures of minus 25 to 85 degrees centigrade. I, what? Who's putting themselves in situations where there are 85 degrees centigrade? 15 off boiling, that's just ridiculous. They're compatible with basically everything, which is the intent. Um, and the pricing and availability, the crux of it, is good. It's actually good. So they're available, the micro, so the micro SD is available in 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes. And so the prices are, I don't have one for the 256, but for the 128, it's $20.99. And for the 512, it's $64.99. The SD card version is available in 64 gigabytes at the lowest, still going up to 512. But from the lowest is $18.99. Uh, $18 and it's $84.99 for the 512. Um, that is really good for a card of that size. $84, nine, $85 for 512 gigabytes on an SD card. That is crazy. Uh, they're going to be available in October. So not long to wait. Um, yeah. Great new little cards. Anyway, right, let's move on. <laughs> software now so don't usually talk that much um, about avid but i do talk a fair bit about ai it, it seems and so avid have announced that they are bringing in ai driven video editing enhancements what are they i hear you ask well 
I'm just, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now. So the key updates are phrase find AI. Um, this tool offers transcription based uh, search results rather than phonetic searching, allowing for better cataloging of dialogue driven media. It presents full text search results and will support 21 languages for automatic language detection. Um, improved search uh, efficiency helps editors quickly find clips and start editing directly from the search results. Things not too dissimilar from other NLEs. Um, sit script, uh, script sync AI. This solution saves editors time by creating scripts from clips and auto aligning media with text in the script window. It eliminates the manual process of sorting dailies and aligning media with script text, leading to faster project completion and more fluid production workflow. Again, you know, Resolve, Premiere, all these sorts of like text-based AI integrations with the platforms. I think Avid are just kind of catching up with that. But for those that use Avid, Avid's, you know, it's been the way it's been for so long. Adding in things like this is actually welcome for Avid users. How long it takes Avid users to get on board with it is another question. I'm not, hey, I'm not putting any labels on Avid users, but early adopters could find this useful, is what I'm going to say. That's what's, that's where I'll leave it. Availability of these features. The new, these new AI-driven features are available as previews in the latest Media Composer release. Um, because Avid is encouraging feedback from customers through a new community forum um, dedicated for these AI tools. So it doesn't sound like they're like officially releasing it. It's like a preview that is available in the latest model. They plan to showcase these updates and offer a sneak peek into other AI-powered capabilities at IBC 2023 in Amsterdam, um, which is happening in Sept uh, September which is happening September 15th to 18th. So you should expect some bumper content from me as I kind of keep abreast of IBC 2023, make sure that I'm bringing you all the latest that's coming out of there uh, from Amsterdam. It's in, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, um, but there should be some good stuff from there, uh, usually is. But anyway, that that brings us back up to speed um, over the last, I think it might have been like a couple of months. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry for being away for so long, um, but, you know, life... Life is life and you've got to live it. So anyway, if I missed anything, which I might have done because I was away for so long, let others know in the comments, uh, in the show, in, you know, uh, in the reviews on the podcast. And yeah, this is here to help you work smarter, not harder. Take advantage of it because that's what DigiPro Tips is all about. Um, and I like doing it for you guys. Um, so yeah, I guess only thing to say is um, see you in the next one. <laughs>